All right, welcome to geometry. I'm changing this seven dash three. Uh, we're looking at slopes, and beginning we'll look at parallel lines, and we're also looking at perpendicular lines and their attributes on a coordinate plane, uh, as well as in their equation form. So, uh, first we're looking at parallel lines, and here we do have. I'll just give you a way that these are parallel lines, and I've wanted to let's write the equation of these two lines, and then we can make observations about um, how do slopes look when lines are parallel. So let's start with our orange line. So orange line starting from here, our y-intercept is uh, is 1. So we know that's going to be plus 1 at the end. And our slope would move up 1 across 1, 2, 3. So up 1 across 3. Just to show you again, up 1 across 1, 2, 3. So you can see that that's the slope for our orange line. Let's look at our red line. Our red line's intercept is at negative 2. So it's minus 2. And our slope is, we'll start from here, this moves up 1, across 1, 2, 3. Again, up 1, across 1, 2, 3. So this also has a slope of 1 third. Um, and if you uh, look at these, what do these two lines, equations of the lines, have in common is their slope, right? They both have a slope of 1 third. So what you can tell is that parallel lines will have the same slope. Their y-intercepts are different, because remember, that's just where they hit the y-axis. These are different spots. Another line could come like this and be parallel and hit up here. So they could have different y-intercepts, but their slopes are the same. All right, let's look at perpendicular For perpendicular lines, let's do the same thing that we just did. So starting with the red line this time. Starting with the red line this time. So the red line, and this line is just a little off here. The red line should actually come more like this. You can see the dot. Uh, so this y-intercept is at negative 3. And um, let's go ahead and graph the slope. So the slope moves down 1, 2, to the right 1. Down 1, 2, to the right 1. So down 1, to the right 2, negative 1 half. Let's look at the orange line. This comes in at 2. And this line would move up 1, to the right 1, 2. Up 1, to the right 1, 2. So up 1, to the right 2. Oh, I had this, um, this one backwards. I'm so sorry. The red line, um, change my color back. The red line was down 2. Down 2 to the right one. So it should be negative 2 over 1. My bad. Down 2 to the right one. Down 2 to the right one. So here are two lines. Uh, what can we observe about the slopes of these lines? So again, we're looking at perpendicular lines. Okay, so these lines are perpendicular. Um, it's not labeled, but these lines in perpendicular means that they intercept and form 90-degree angles, uh, all the way around, actually, all four sides to be 90-degree angles. But what can we notice about their slopes here? Um, the property that I want you to see is that since uh, none of these lines are vertical, that their the product of their slopes should equal negative 1. So meaning that 1 half times negative 2 over 1 equals negative 1. So the product of slopes equals negative 1. Another way that it's been said is that perpendicular lines, uh, the slopes are a negative reciprocal of each other. So if 1 is 1 half, a slope that is perpendicular to this would A be the reciprocal and then B be negative. Uh, so that's how you could tell that these two lines are perpendicular. Let's move on. So in this question it says check to see if these lines are parallel. So to check we have to find the slope of each of these lines, then see if the slopes are equal to each other. Because remember, um, parallel lines will have slopes that are equal to each other. Perpendicular lines will have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. So first, let's work with the orange line. So we'll call this um, our first coordinate and this one our second. So again, y2 minus y1. So negative 4, I'll do it over here, negative 4 minus 3 over negative 1 minus 3. So to simplify, we have negative 7 over negative 4. My bad, this should be um, minus negative 3. So this would actually be negative 1 plus 3, so this would not be a 4 at all. This would be a 2. Negative 7 over 2. And just to show you again, that means that this went down 7 spaces. 1, 2, 3. 
4, 5, 6, 7, and then across 1, 2. So there's the slope of this line. What's the slope of a red line? We'll call this our first coordinate and this our second. So again, y2 minus y1. So negative 4 minus 5, and then x2 minus x1. 2 minus negative 1. So negative 4 and 5 would be negative 9. Negative 2 plus 1 would be 3. Uh, in this case, the slope is a total of negative 3. So is 7, is negative 7 halves the same as negative 3? No, so these lines are not parallel. Again, just to restate, for lines to be parallel, they would have to have the same slope. This slope would have to be the same as this. And negative 7 halves is not the same as negative 3. Let's move on. All right, write an equation for a line. Write an equation of a line parallel to y equals negative 3x minus 5 that contains the point negative 1, 8. So first we have our line here, and let's write that out. I'll just do this all in, in black. It's fine, actually. Um, so y equals negative 3x minus 5. So that's in slope-intercept form. Um, now we know the slope, then, uh, in this case, is negative 3. So we know that our slope... Equals negative three. Now we also have this line that we need to write as parallel to this, right? So that means that that line has to have the same slope. So I know that my my line that I'm writing is going to be y. Uh, well, it depends what form we start. Not only is it, is, but it has to have a slope of three, and it needs to pass through this line. So since we're passing or passing this point, since we're passing through a point, we need to use point slope. which to remind you is y minus y1 equals the slope x minus x1. And we have all this information now here, right? So we have our slope of negative 3. So I can write that. I'll change colors now. Our slope, oops, sorry. Our slope is negative 3. Our x1 coordinate we have, that is negative 1. So that's going to be plus 1, right, because it's minus and then a negative. And then we have our y1, which is 8. So now we have it in point slope form. Uh, we'll just go ahead and write this in slope intercept form. So that means that the 3 would have to distribute. So I have y minus 8 equals negative 3x minus 3. And then add 8 to both sides. y equals negative 3x plus 5. So this line right here is parallel to this line. They have the same slope of negative 3, and that's all that matters. Let's continue. All right, are these lines perpendicular? This is a lot like the ones that we did for parallel lines. So the first thing we have to do is find the slope of each line, and then after that, we can see that if their slopes are negative reciprocals. So let's start with our orange line. We'll call this the first coordinate, and this the second coordinate. So remember... Slope, I'll just write this one out. Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The change in your verticality or the change horizontally. Uh, so that would be, for this orange line, 4 minus 2 over 0 minus negative 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. Oh, this, this should say negative 4. Oh, no. Yeah, this should say negative 4 here. Sorry. It actually should say negative 6. My bad. Negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 2 make negative 6 over 0 minus negative 4, which is positive. We can reduce this to get negative 3 over 2. So that's the slope of our orange line. Let's look at the slope of a right line. We'll call this our first coordinate and this our second. So y2 is 3 minus negative 3 and 4 minus negative 5. This becomes 3 plus 3, which is 6. This becomes 4 plus 5, which is 9. And we can reduce that to 2 thirds. Now the question is, does 2 thirds, I'll write this up here, times negative 3 halves equal negative 1? And the answer is the twos cancel, the threes cancel, we have a negative, they equal negative one, so these are perpendicular lines. Another way to think about it is, 
Are these two the negative reciprocals of each other? Yes, they are. So these two lines are perpendicular. One last section. All right, write an equation of, of a line perpendicular to y equals 1 fifth x plus 2 that contains this point 15, negative 4. So first of all, if we know, let's just look at this line here. Um, we have y equals 1 fifth x plus 2. Since this is in slope-intercept form, we know that the slope is 1 fifth. So then of the line that we need to write, write an equation that's perpendicular to this, what would the slope need to be? Well, it would need to be the negative reciprocal of this. So the line that we need to have needs to have a slope of negative 5 over 1. So that's step 1 done. We have our slope. It also needs to contain this point. So let's write that equation. y minus y1, which is negative 4, equals our slope, negative 5. I just reduced this to negative 5 times x minus x1, which is 15. Let's distribute this and put this in slope-intercept form. So first we distribute the negative 5. We have y plus 4 over here. Simplify those negatives. Negative 5x plus 75. And lastly, we're just subtracting 4 from each side. And I'll just write this here. y equals negative 5x plus 71. Uh, just to check, is our equation perpendicular to this? The one thing that matters for it to be perpendicular is that our slope is the negative reciprocal. So 1 fifth is the negative reciprocal of negative 5. So that's good. Does it contain this point? Yes. We built it in in point-slope form, and then we just changed it to slope-intercept. All right. Good luck on your homework, and uh, see you guys next time.